good morning dear friends today we are going to discuss about the basics of immunity we would be dealing with the body's defense mechanism wherein we will be talking about innate and acquired immunity first of all i would like to discuss what immunity is so immunity refers to the different mechanisms and responses imposed by the body to protect itself against the foreign challenges or any other kind of infection the foreign challenge could be a microorganism could be a toxin or can be a non compatible living cells or any other other foreign substance when a foreign substance tries to invade an organism various cells tissues and organs they resist the entry of that foreign substance into the organism this constitutes the immune system now what immune response is so immune response is a complex process and it's actually the body's ability to recognize and resist an infection by enabling the protection against the harmful foreign agents this is rendered by the unique ability of the immune system to discriminate between self and non self molecules to detect and eliminate the non self molecule in an organism there have been two types of immune responses that comes into action that includes the innate which we call as non specific and acquired which we call as specific immunity now beginning our discussion with innate immunity first of all would like to discuss about the characteristics of innate immunity now to deal with a pathogen an organism's innate immune system adopts any of the three strategies which includes avoidance resistance and tolerance this innate immunity has also been known as the first line of defense against the foreign foreign invaders it remains active prior to the attack by the pathogen and it is present since birth this innate immunity is very fast but non specific means it does not respond according to the type of invader it does not rely on the previous exposure to a pathogen so it has no memory now if we talk about the components of innate immunity there have been various components like physical barriers chemical barriers cellular components and pattern recognition receptors which we call as prrs which helps in the detection of the pathogen or any molecule which is associated with the with the pathogen right now first we begin our discussion with the components of innate immunity that includes physical barriers so these physical barriers they do not allow the microorganisms to penetrate into the body your respiratory tract gastrointestinal tract and genitourinary tract they all are lined by mucous membrane to trap the invading microorganism the mucosal surface they produces many antimicrobial protein which act as the natural antibiotic to prevent the entry of the pathogen if we talk about the chemical barriers these chemical barriers they include acidic ph so body secretion like uh, your sweat your sebaceous secretions your uh, acidic ph stomach they contain the hydrolytic enzymes and chemicals that inhibit the microbial growth the chemical barrier also includes soluble antimicrobial peptides these are the antimicrobial peptides which remain present at the epithelial surface which includes your lysozyme uh, lactoferrins are there defensins are there cathelicidin are there right so if we talk about lysozyme which is the 
which is an example of the soluble antimicrobial protein you might be aware of the fact that this lysozyme is present in tears as well as the fluids of the respiratory tract and it functions by cleavage of the peptidoglycan component of the cell wall and finally damage the microorganism lactoferrins which is the second example of the soluble antimicrobial peptide is widely represented in various body secre secretion fluids it binds and sequesters metal ions which are required by the microbes and consequently limits their growth if we talk about the next component of the soluble antimicrobial proteins it include defensins which are cysteine rich cationic peptides which are secreted mainly by neutrophils to kill the phagocytosed microbes cathelicidin are the antimicrobial peptides expressed in the intestinal epithelium of humans and bovines they kill the microbes by membrane disruption the cellular component if we begin with includes all the cells which are involved in your immune system almost all the cells not but not completely all like b and t cells they are not a component of innate immunity so these cellular components they constitute the second line of defense and if a pathogen evades the physical and the chemical barrier the cellular components they come into action they participate in innate host defense mechanism the different cells they include the neutrophils the dendritic cells monocyte mast cells natural killer cells macrophages and many other cell types if we talk about the pattern recognition receptors so these uh, there are variety of pamps there are variety of uh, prr sorry these pat, uh, these uh, pattern recognition receptors they could be present they are the pathogen associated molecules which are present on the surface of the microorganisms means every microbe have certain type of molecules on their surface and these molecules they are being detected by the cells of our immune system and we call them as pathogen associated molecular patterns now variety of path pathogen associated molecular patterns uh, are found on different microorganisms there are receptors on the cells of innate immune system that recognize these pathogen specific molecules signature and they are called prrs that is the pattern recognition receptors the cells of immune, innate immune system they express the multiferrous prrs in abundance to recognize the pams this uh, diagram help you to understand the various components of the innate immunity which has categorized the components of innate immunity into four major types and subtypes have also been discussed here which will help you to understand the different components along with their sub components in detail it includes the examples their specific mode of action and the way how do they work the second type of, of immunity that we are going to discuss is the acquired immunity which is antigen specific immune mechanism which is mediated by this acquired immunity the acquisition of specificity may be attributed to infection with a disease by symptomatic carriages of the pathogen by harboring an organism with a similar structure or by vaccination the innate response provokes and activates the adaptive immune response it means both of these are not independent rather activation of innate immunity also activates the acquired immunity and both of the, these work in collaboration to eliminate the pathogen among the various characteristics of the acquired immunity includes the diversity and specificity this has the immunological memory which was not there in case of innate immunity it is very specific specific to the type of uh, invader 
which is going to infect our body has the self limitation while it is non reactive to the self molecule it means the characteristic of discrimination between self and non self persists here as well and it is mediated by different cell types b and t lymphocytes the antigen specific acquired immunity against infectious disease is mainly mediated by the b and the t lymphocytes the b lymphocyte produces the antibody and the t lymphocyte is mainly responsible for the production of cytokines there are two broad class of such response that we call as antibody response which is mediated by the b lymphocyte and the cell mediated immune response which is mediated by t lymphocytes the immunity mediated by these two factors may result in direct effect upon the pathogen such as the antibody mediated uh, complement lysis there could be opsonization and killing as it occurs for some bacteria there could be neutralization of viruses to prevent their entry into the cells or there could be t lymphocytes which can kill the parasitized which can kill the cells parasitized by a microorganism so these are the two types one mediated by b cell where the immunoglobulins that is the antibodies are produced and the other which we call as cell mediated immune response which is mainly mediated by t cell and produces the cytokines now there have been different types of uh, cell mediated immune response the acquired immunity could be of various types uh, first it the type we had discussed just before the humoral and cell mediated is based on the types of cell involved second type is based on the activation that what type of cells are being activated we classify the acquired immunity based on activation into active immunity and passive immunity so active immunity is developed by exposure to a pathogen while the passive immunity is developed when someone receives the antibody this diagram help you understand the better the different types of the immune system and their sub types uh, better different types of acquired immunity and their sub types so the first classification here you can see it is the based on types of cell involved that is humoral mediated by b cell cell mediated mediated by t cells when we talk about the acquired immunity based on activation it could be active or passive so active immunity is developed by exposure to a pathogen while passive immunity is developed when someone receives the prepared antibodies now active immunity could be further categorized into two sub types natural immunity and artificial immunity which includes natural immunity includes that the immunity could be acquired because of the antibodies developed in response to the infection while the artificial immunity being given by vaccines however the passive immunization could also be of two types the natural and artificial natural includes the breast milk cholesterol received by the baby which is uh, which is a secretion of the prepared antibody and supposed to be very healthy for the newborn the artificial immunity includes the plasma therapy the third type of categorization of acquired immunity includes uh, the division based on the frequency of exposure to an antigen so based on the frequency of exposure to an antigen acquired immunity can be further categorized into primary immune response or secondary immune response the primary immune response refers to the first exposure as the name suggests primary it is the first exposure of an antigen to the host that leads to the formation of uh, antigen specific b cells and t cells replication they produce effector cells and long lived memory cells however the secondary immune response develops on encounter of the same antigen the antigen can mount a more rapid immune response an effective one right so when we are talking about the primary immune response it means the antigen has got encountered into the body for the very first time 
and it will lead to the formation of antibodies and uh, form activation of T cells but the the effector cells they will be in normal in number and they will have memory while in secondary immune response the memory which is captured by the primary immune response is already in the storage it is already in the uh, in the cells of immune system so the moment they encounter the same integer for the second time they are going to mount a very rapid a very effective and a heightened immune response